I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Maserati Rick in Detroit Convertible bird in Miami Graduated summa cum laude Strip club made a tsunami Carlton Hines with the ball game Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes Craig Pettis in the M-Town Sal Magluta with the boat game Falcone with the cocaine Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game Like Monster Cody in South Central Larry Davis from Close Range you know, team made more noise in the days and weeks leading up to the NBA draft than the Lakers, but by the time the draft finally got here this afternoon in New York, nothing had changed. Granted, Kevin Garnett and Jermaine O'Neal haven't been traded to anyone else, but rebuilding through the draft is tough when you pick 19th. One of the minor moves the Lakers made was saying Smith Parker will not be back at point guard, and with that in mind, they used their first pick to take 19-year-old freshman Javaris Crittenden out of Georgia Tech. He's 6'4", so that's big for a point guard, but he's even younger than Jordan Farmar. Besides Crittenden, the Lakers went international in a big way in the second round, drafting 6'9 swing man Sun Yu from China with the 40th pick. Later, the Lakers selected 7-foot center Mark Gasol, who is the brother of Grizzly center Paul Gasol. That was pick number 48. As for Crittenden, the Lakers are high on their new young point guard. The hard part about getting a young player is that you have to wait sometimes for their talents to develop. So it may take a little bit, but this kid is clearly... You know, a very talented ball handling The Wizards guard. began the new year with the NBA's sixth worst record at 10 and 20. Now come reports from the New York Post and Yahoo Sports, both citing unidentified sources that say Wizards point guard Gilbert Arenas and teammate Javaris Crittenden allegedly drew guns on each other during a recent locker room argument over a gambling debt. The league, the team, and D.C. police already were investigating why Arenas brought guns into the Verizon Center last month. The Wizards have said the firearms were unloaded and kept in a locked container with no ammunition. Friday, Wizards coach Flip Saunders had nothing more to say about the matter. We've made a statement, and that's all I'm commenting on right now. However, the Post reports Crittenden became angry at Arenas for refusing to make good on a gambling debt. The paper cites NBA sources saying Arenas was prompted to draw on Crittenden, who then reached for a gun. Wizards guard Nick Young says he never saw such an incident. He'd be leaving each other uh the team for the family, so I don't think nothing like that happened. Arenas originally didn't take the post and Yahoo reports seriously, at first putting a message on Twitter saying, quote, I wake up this morning and seen I was the new John Wayne. Media is too funny. Later, he tweeted he couldn't talk about the report the way he wanted to. The NBA's collective bargaining agreement allows for players to legally possess firearms, but prohibits them at league facilities or when traveling on league business. Pending the outcome of the investigation, Arenas and Crittenden both could face fines or suspensions from the NBA. Wizards forward Mike Miller says the team can't allow the investigation to become a distraction. People are going to investigate and look into it, and they're going to do their job. we got to do ours. Right to it. This is what NBA Commissioner David Stern had to say about the whole issue, although it is clear that the actions of Mr. Arenas will ultimately result in a substantial suspension, and perhaps worse, his ongoing conduct has led me to conclude that he is not currently fit to take the court in an NBA game. I am suspending Mr. Arenas indefinitely without pay, effective immediately, pending the completion of the investigation by the NBA. We now bring in Ken Berger, our NBA columnist, to talk about it all. Ken, obviously there was serious uh, regardless, but when Arenas sprayed fake gunfire uh, in a huddle during a game, was that kind of the last straw? Did it kind of speed the process along? Just hours after announcing he would turn himself into authorities in Georgia, Former NBA player Javaris Crittenton was arrested in Southern California. Crittenton faces a murder charge for a deadly shooting in Atlanta. The FBI took him into custody after he had checked in for a flight to return there from John Wayne Airport in Orange County. Authorities issued a warrant for Crittenton's arrest in the August 19th shooting of 22-year-old Julian Jones, the mother of four young children. We believe that Ms. Jones was walking down the street with another individual and at some point, um, Mr. Crittenton pulled up and we believe uh, that he discharged his weapon outside of a black Chevy Tahoe, striking Ms. Jones in the leg. Police have said the motive appears to be retaliation for a robbery in April in which the former Georgia Tech player was a victim. When he was with the Washington Wizards in December 2009, Crittenton and then teammate Gilbert Arenas had a dispute over a card game on a team flight. Two days later, Arenas brought four guns to the locker room and set them in front of Crittenden's locker with a sign telling him to pick one. Crittenden then took out his own gun. He pleaded guilty in January 2010 to a misdemeanor gun charge and received a year of unsupervised probation. Noel Waghorn, the Associated Press. Yo, yo. We back. It's your boy, Papa Lot. 
mob ties. We on our way to Georgia with it. The A. Well, my niggas from Atlanta, y'all niggas get in the comment box, tap in. Everybody from Georgia, matter of fact, y'all flood that bitch below us. Now, today we are going to be covering a tale of tragedy. You know, every once in a while, we kind of, or well, should I say of promise, or I don't even know what to call it, but today we are going to be covering the tale of someone that had promise that um, really essentially made it out the hood. But I either you it was the situation where they say you can't take the hood out the person or the hood drag the person back. I'll let y'all be the judges of that or answer that question. Now, today we're going to be covering a guy by the name of Javaris Cortez Crentingdon. And Mr. Crentingdon was born on December 31st. 1987 so it's gonna make him born he's gonna be a new year's eve baby so pretty much i guess that made him come out ready for whatever now javaris crittenton was born in atlanta georgia he attended the basketball powerhouse southwest atlanta christian academy um and I say it's a powerhouse because future NBA Hall of Famer Dwight Howard also went there. And Javaris Crentington actually teamed up with Dwight Howard in his sophomore year of high school. Um, and him and Dwight Howard actually won the state championship that year. Now, um, as a junior in 2005, when the team was pretty much... I want to say solely his, I'm sure, had other stars on it because it's a basketball powerhouse, but Dwight Howard had um, foregone college and then by that time went into the NBA to be drafted by the Orlando Magic. Now, in 2005, Crenton then averaged 28.4 points, 7.5 assists, 8.2 rebounds, and this was as a junior. He led the school to the finals versus... Uh, another school by the name of Randolph Clay, which he lost, but he came to avenge that loss as a senior where he averaged 29 points, nine assists, seven rebounds. And like I said, he led Southwest Atlanta Christian Academy to the state championship and he was named a McDonald's All-American. He was also named a Mr. Georgia Basketball by the Atlanta Journal Constitution. So um to sum it up for for people that watch basketball you kind of know what that means um if if you're there because you can just imagine yourself in that position but the people that don't let me explain it to you so the mcdonald's all-american game is going to be a highlight of i want to say the top 24 players in the nation we all know it's 50 states so only 24 players from those states are picked and he was actually one of them and not only that he by all accounts he was a very smart fellow he was um a member of the future business leaders of america and he carried a 3.5 gpa average in high school so by all accounts he was set off to be successful now he would end up being drafted by the los angeles lakers um in the first round ninth 19th overall after a successful freshman season at Georgia Tech from 2006 to 2007. Now this is where it takes a turn and this is why we're talking about him on Mob Ties. Um, because by all accounts or according to the media, they're going to say after he was drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers, he began to ally himself with a notorious gang associated or based out of California by the name of the Mansfield Gangster Crips. Now, um, I'm not, I can't really speak too much on, I guess, like their rivals or their history. Um, but what we can speak on or what was covered is, if you guys remember, it was a uh, semi-popular artist from atlanta by the name of dollar 
um, and on May 18, 2009, um, he was gunned down at the Beverly Center, uh, which is located at the edge of Beverly Hills in West Hollywood, California, um, and which was in a series of stuff that was kind of like, uh, like to say murky, because, well, they said that a situation in Atlanta carried over to California and that ended up happening but that's a whole nother mob tie situation but the rapper dollar was also according to uh, media outlets associated with the Mansfield Gangsta Crips and it's from there where pretty much Javar's Crentington life would change um, pretty much for the foreseeable future um, because he would be drafted by the Lakers, but then would end up being traded to the Memphis Grizzlies in a trade that would bring them Kwame Brown, if you guys remember that, any basketball fans. And then it would lead him to the Washington Wizards, which he would end up being traded there as part of a three-team deal on December 10th, 2008. Now, in December of uh, roughly a year later, in December 2009, Crentington and all-star guard Gilbert Arenas were involved in a locker room conversation in a locker room confrontation that involved both men drawing weapons. Um, some accounts say Gilbert Arenas had four unloaded, which caused Javar Crentington to pull his. And from what's going from the little bits and pieces I was able to figure out, it seems like Javaris Crentington had beaten Gilbert Arenas in some kind of gambling game. Gilbert Arenas had what we used to call back in the days as better them, where you not getting whatever. And that led to these series of events. And I can see how that could be possible as to Gilbert Arenas being a uh, um, a megastar who had just signed a, a super contract because breaking down him, he was drafted in the NBA in the second round. That time when he was a second round draft pick, I think he was only signed to a one year deal. He had a great rookie year. Then he was able to sign with any any other team, if I'm not mistaken. That's how it went down. And he went to the Wizards and he pretty much blew up. Some people remember him in the epic game, I think against Kobe Bryant, where I want to say they both had close to 50. but. Yeah, so Gilbert Arenas was the big dog on the team. Javaris Crentington was pretty much the journeyman because he had been on several teams. But that didn't cause him to back down. And that led to pretty much the demise of almost Gilbert Arenas' career because he pretty much was never the same after that. I can't remember what happened. But that also started the downward spiral in Javaris Crentington's career because he would go on to play with one more team after that um which was charlotte bobcats and that was on september the 22nd of 2010 they signed him to a non-guaranteed contract and they released him three three weeks after and then it's going to that's where we're going to end up with him um facing these murder charges because on august 26 2011 Javaris Crentington was charged with a August 19th murder of a female by the name of Julian Jones, who was actually 22 years old. And the Atlanta Police Department, they said that she was not the intended target. They believed that Crentington was targeting the person who had robbed them in April of 2011. So it's like one year you're out the NBA and then the next year, you like doing drive-bys on somebody that robbed you and so during the course of that drive-by shooting jones was shot in the leg and she died during surgery um and javars crinsonton was apprehended by the fbi at ironically john wayne airport on you know, some john wayne type shit and and that was on august the 29th while he was waiting to board a flight back to atlanta his lawyer stated that crinton's sole purpose for the trip to atlanta was to, to surrender himself to the police now uh 
After he was arrested by the FBI, he was extradited to Atlanta to stand trial for murder. Um, and that that really started everything going down. Crentington and a cousin of his by the name of Douglas Gamble were officially indicted on the char on the 12 counts on April the 2nd, 2013, um, in connection with the death of Jones, including charges of murder, felony murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, given false statements, attempted murder, and participation in criminal street gang activity. So, um, and the, like I said, the Atlanta police widely reported lead widely reported that um Crenton joined the Crips gang after he signed with the Los Angeles Lakers and that's according to Fulton County a district dist Fulton County assistant district attorney Gabe Banks now and they said he also and this is a, another kicker they say he also shot at a person by the name of DeMontez Stevens earlier in August of 2011 and the targets of both shootings were supposedly to be Trevonia Stevens and um, that's going to be the brother of De that's going to be so those are going to be brothers going to be Trevonia Stevens and DeMontez Stevens and they said they're going to be members of the ROC crew which was a member uh, which was a blood set association so and somehow either they were it could have been a rivalry situation situation but Javaris Crenshaw was avenging what police say was a robbery that occurred earlier that year so we always talk about the fall from graces from athletes. I always have to mention, uh, like Maurice Claret's one name that usually comes to mind. Um, some people say Mike Tyson. Some people say Mike Vick. But the thing about them is they had the chance to reach the, the highest pinnacle in their sports. So it's like Mike Tyson was a heavyweight championship, heavyweight champion before it all went down. Michael Vick signed a hundred million dollar contract before he got into his legal situation. Um, even Maurice Claret to a certain extent because he had won a Heisman Trophy and a national championship. So with Javaris Crentington, he might be at on a lower scale. And when I always do these episodes involving athletes, I always ask y'all, name a more tragic sports story of somebody that was supposed to had been on success or been away from the game that ended up being lured back into it man it's your boy pop a lot y'all make sure y'all follow me on instagram twitter p-o-p -P underscore a underscore l-o-t y'all get at me y'all hit the bell under the videos y'all comment y'all direct message me however y'all want i'm here for all the shit and we're gonna be back with some more real trill spill shit it's the mob 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 ties